All right, what's going on my friends? In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to install an in-ground fence around your property to keep your dogs in your yard. Uh, some just some call this an invisible fence. It really don't matter what brand you get. I got PetSafe brand, and for some of this stuff that I have here in this video, I will put a link down in the description. And I also rented a machine called an Easy Trench Cable Installer that's gonna make putting the wire that comes with this system a lot easier than going around with an edging shovel. I will show you every way to put this wire in. So if you don't have a real big property, you don't have to rent one of these machines, but it would really make this job a hundred times easier. Like where I live, West Branch Rental is where I rented my machine from. That is the only place I could find to even rent this machine where I live. I will put right here over on the screen, I'll put the phone number for their place in Lewisburg and their place in Seelands Grove. Now they also have like hundreds and hundreds of other stuff that you can rent there. You can rent stump grinders, mini excavators. You can rent equipment to even install carpet. You can rent, they have loaders. You can rent pressure washers, trailers. They got just about everything there. So I'll put the information to their address down in the description. And right here on the screen, I will have their phone number for their Lewisburg and their Sealands Grove stores. Let me open this box up and I'll show you some of the stuff that does come in this kit just in case you decide you want to buy this kit. I've done this two other times before and this is the same, the same company I went with before and it seems to be just fine other than my one got hit by lightning. So I'd watch if you get a big lightning storm, maybe unplug it or have a really good surge protector on it. This one does come with a surge protector, but this comes with some flags. This kit will only come with enough flags for about a quarter or a third of an acre. I ended up buying more wire and I have more flags for my property. This is the transmitter that comes with it. It comes with a collar. I picked this kit because I've had one of these collars before. Oh, actually, I still think I have the other collar, but you can put a nine volt battery in this, which I really like is it's really easy to replace the nine volt battery. And it has, I think it has like five or six different settings for different strengths. My kit is called a stubborn dog kit. I think the only reason they really call that a stubborn dog kit because it does have a setting on this where if your dog is laying in the warning zone where it's just kind of beeping and vibrating at them, but it's not giving them a static charge, they can just keep laying there and lay there and lay there. I used to have a dog that would lay there and it would kill the batteries all the time. So I made sure I got one of these stubborn dog collars and after it lays there for so long, it will give them a static charge to get them out of that area. I don't know if my dog was smart or what. This kit does come with 500 foot of wire. Now I'll show you the wire I got. I got a thousand foot roll because I like to do this in one straight shot all the way around my house. I really don't like to do splices. The manual that comes with it, it shows you how to do the splices. They're real simple. And like I said, the 500 foot will be good for about one third to one quarter acre comes with a battery, some uh, another set of little points that goes on this collar. So if you have a dog with short hair or long hair, it comes with two different ones. This is a test light. So you'll be able to test your collar to make sure it's working. This is the little surge protector that comes with it. This is the power adapter. If you end up doing this and you have to splice your wire, this is what you're gonna wanna have. These little things like this have dialectic grease in them. So you'll make your You'll make your splice, you'll put your little wire connector on your wire. It'll show you that in the manual, real simple. And once you get that wire or those wires connected together, then you'll tie a little knot in your wire and then you will open this up and it's got grease down inside. You'll shove that down in there and that grease will help keep all the moisture off of your wire because you don't want to get moisture on those wires. It'll start giving you a fault on your, your transmitter. I hopefully I'm not gonna have to use them. All right, that was everything that came in the box. Another important thing that I wanna point out is if you are scared that when you're digging with your shovel, which you're only gonna go down like two and a half to three inches, if you're scared you're gonna hit some wires or something in your yard, I would call 811 and it's a free service. They will come to your house and show you if there's any kind of wires or cable in your yard. All right, let me go over some of the tools that I'm gonna to use to do this job. You may not need all these tools. I'll try to explain what I'm gonna use some of the tools for. So that way you'll know if you need them or don't need them. You're gonna need a set of gloves. Maybe if you're starting this in the morning, you're definitely gonna need a cup of coffee. 
I'm gonna use a drill. You don't have to use a drill. You'll see what I use this for toward the end of the project. And before you go anywhere, make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because my kids want to see me put this around my neck and walk into the wire to see if this collar works. You may need a hammer drill if you're going through a block wall or concrete to get your wire back into your house because you cannot put that receiver outside. It's not waterproof. You may need a circular saw to cut through your driveway if you have an asphalt or a concrete driveway. Also with a blade on it that will cut through the asphalt or concrete. I'm gonna use a, a string line to snap a line across my asphalt driveway so I can get a nice straight cut. You're gonna need maybe some wire strippers to strip the wire. And if you don't rent the machine that I rented, you're gonna need an edging shovel. I'll show you how to use this. I did this with the first house that I lived in. I used an edging shovel. It's a lot cheaper, but it is a lot more work. And if you have the edge and shovel, you're probably going to want maybe a little stick to help push the wire down in. And I ended up using this sledgehammer just for when I put the wire down in, I would pound, try to close up the hole with my sledgehammer. I'll show you that also. And if you cut your driveway, you're going to want something to seal your drive, uh, seal the crack up in your driveway again. I have asphalt, so I bought this sealant. Here, I'll put a picture on the screen. To, you can get some other sealant just for if you have concrete. Just go to a hardware store and ask them something to seal up a crack and they'll, they should be able to direct you. You don't have to have the stuff that goes in a gun like this, but I just find this to be a little easier. If you end up getting a machine like I got, I would recommend having some hearing protection and eye protection. And I'm also gonna use a, maybe a couple screwdrivers. These I'm gonna use kind of like a stake just to hold my wire while I, when I start my wire, or I think also where I'm gonna put my two wires together and twist them together. And I may use some paint just to try to mark out a couple little areas of where I'm going. And me, because my property is real nice and square, I'm going to end up using this nice orange string line so I get a nice straight line with, with the machine that I rented. Or even if you use an edge and shovel, it would be nice to have something to stay on track and stay straight. And I already did this part, but before you even start this project, you can buy enough wire just for, say, like a half an acre. Or I recommend maybe just going out and measuring the boundaries where you're going to put your wire so you definitely 100% know you have enough wire. They will tell you in the manual how much wire you need, but I think, to me, I think these numbers are like almost exact. So I wouldn't try to get the exact amount of wire. You can find 500 foot rolls and you could find 1,000 foot rolls, but I definitely couldn't find 450 foot or 800 or 480 foot. Or this will kind of help get you on track of how much wire you need. And right here's the machine I rented. This machine will actually dig the little trench, bury the wire, and kind of fill the hole back in all at the same time. And this is a spool of a thousand foot of 14 gauge dog fence wire. I'll put this down in the description also. You don't really have to maybe get 14 gauge, but they have some that maybe like 16 gauge would probably be nice also. This is one thing nobody would show me when I was looking up this, but this down here, this is what's going to dig my little trench. See, they're maybe half inch wide, maybe a little bit bigger. And then the wire will go through here and get pushed into the ground. And then the dirt flies out the top here and fills the hole back in. All right, let me go over a few different ways that you can lay this wire out and maybe a few things that you should not do. All this stuff is in the manual if you want to read up more on it. I do recommend looking over the manual a little bit, but there's a a lot of information in the manual, so it might confuse you a little bit. So hopefully this video helps you out. All right, first, let's talk about taking your, line, your wire across the driveway. This is what I'm gonna be doing to my asphalt. I'm gonna cut it and then drop my line down inside my asphalt. Then I'm gonna put some of this driveway crack seal in to fill in the crack. And if you have a dirt driveway, they recommend to dig up a little trench and use like a maybe a half a piece of half inch PVC or maybe an old water hose to lay in there and put your wire through so that way to help protect your wire. Now a couple ways that you can lay your wire out. This one on the left, this is the way I am going to lay my wire out. It's going to come out actually it's going to come out of my garage. This looks really similar to my house. It's going to come out of the back of my garage and then mine's going to go over this way. And the, where you take the wire out of your house, you're gonna have to 
twist your wire. That will cancel the signal from this wire. So your dog will be able to walk over that part of the wire right there and they will not get a static correction. And it says in the manual, the twists have to be 10 twists every foot. With I'm gonna come out of the garage or at the back of my garage, I'm gonna give myself plenty of wire so I'll have enough wire to go in through my garage. I'll do that at the end, but I'm gonna start at the back, come across, and then I'm going to go, I think I'm gonna go this way around my house, back here, back here, and then back into my garage. This way is real similar here, except they're going around, say like maybe, maybe you could go around your pool or you could go around some landscaping. You don't want your dog to get in. They did the same thing. They came out of the garage, went around, went over here, went around the landscaping, and then they had to, this wire had to get twisted together. Now this way, I'm sure when they people do stuff like this, I'm gonna guess that they, I'm gonna guess that they splice some of their wire together because it would be a pain in the butt to not splice your wire together. And here's another way you can lay your wire out. If you are, have an existing fence, you could come out of your garage and you can just staple it on your fence and then bury it in the ground in the front, go through your driveway, staple it on your fence here if you wanna do it that way. The only thing that confuses me here is because one thing they do say to, to do is not have sharp corners. So this is gonna give you a sharp corner. So I don't know what would happen here in the corners, but they say you have to have like a three foot radius of a nice rounded corner. Here's another way they have in the manual you can lay them in the manual that you can lay it out if you if you're by like a lake or something and you, your dog maybe wants to go in and hopefully doesn't go in and swim around here and come out the other way, but you can do it this way. Now, if you're looking at this, this is going to take about as much wire as going all the way around. Actually, this probably takes more wire than going all the way around your yard because they're going to come out and then they go right or left and they have to double it up. Go around, come back around again, go around this way and go back in. Because that wire has to come out of your transmitter and go back in your transmitter. So this is why they do this with ones like this. Um, and if you do... If you do end up doing something like this, the wire, these wires here have to be five foot across or five foot apart so they don't mess each other up. So all this will have to be five foot apart all the way around. And here's another way. If you want to do just the front of your yard, it's the same thing that I was just talking about before. You would have to come out, go around, turn here, come back and go around again. I hear you'd have to cut your driveway twice. Another thing, if you would do something like this, you gotta be real careful how close you would take this end to your house. Like if this is your living room right here and you get that wire too close to your living room, you let your dog come in the house, they have their collar on their neck, they could get shocked laying in their living room. So just have to be real careful you don't go too close to your living room. Same thing, you got a fence, You dog doesn't climb the fence or dig under the fence, don't worry about it. You can do just the front of your yard here, five foot apart. How this is just showing where this this person here decided they were going to come out, take the wire out of their out of their box, come around, and just end down here. That was not going to work. Like I said, the wire has to keep coming back around and go back in the box, just like this. And here, when I was talking about having a three foot radius circle, that's what they're showing there. They that's good. Um, this is bad. It's a sharp corner. Also, it looks like they got the wire really close to the house over here. That would also be bad if your dog's, like I said, in the living room. They could get shocked right here at the corner of this house. Here are them sizes again. This is Piper. This is the girl. This is my puppy dog that, while I'm putting this fence in now, we were doing good until she decides to just keep going out in the cornfield and rolling in dead stuff. And some reason my wife does not like that when she comes back in the house smelling like a dead animal. Other than that, she doesn't run off, but she likes to roll in dead stuff, huh, girl? Hmm, yeah. Say goodbye, Piper. Don't forget, at the end of the video, I'm gonna put this collar on my neck and I'm gonna test this wire out just to entertain my boys. They're gonna like this. I got all my tools in my little homemade wagon that I made for behind my bike, so let's get started. All right, the first thing I think I'm gonna do is cut my driveway and I might walk around my property just to get, just to look around and see what I got or where I kind of want to run this. I mean, I've already done that, but that is what you should be doing. 
you want to come up with a plan to see where you want to put your wire and if you're not using a machine like like i'm using a lot of the guys will take their wire lay it out on and then hook it into the machine and make sure everything's working properly right here my downspout drains right here so i got to be careful not cutting into that i got a a sump pump that pumps out right here so there's a big hole so i did measure i measured from my street over i think i'm going to keep it about 11 foot from the the road so when i cut my driveway i'm going to measure in about 11 foot just to try to keep this line nice and straight this is back at the corner of my property and i would have liked to come right up here and go over this corner but i got this really really big root coming off of this tree so if you're not using a machine you could maybe dig under that root and put your wire under underneath but i don't want to cut my wire or like take the whole dang spool off and try to run it under that root so i'm going to go and go on the other side of this tree here this is my backyard so i'm just going to run it up this other side of the tree and come up right next to this field and right here at the back side of my garage, this is where my wire is going to come out. Then I'm going to go up this way, go around my house, and then come back in the garage. All right, I measured, and I, had, I took my mic off because it's so windy out here. I'm hoping that mic's going to sound a little better, but I, I measured from the road in 11 foot, like I said, so I can stay away from, well, also my dog will stay back from the road more. And so I marked it here with chalk and I marked the other side of my driveway with chalk. And now I'm going to dig down right here. Because when I cut around, cut this with my saw, I'm going to try to cut down a little bit too. So that wire will go straight down here. That way if you would end up using an edger or something here, you don't end up cutting your wire. You're gonna to wanna to dig up like that on both sides of your driveway, and then you can snap the line across. Let me do the other side. All right, now I'm gonna snap a chalk line across my driveway so I can make a nice straight line. If you have somebody to help you do this, it'd be a lot easier. Me, I'm going to set my saw for about a half an inch, maybe a little bit more than a half an inch. All right, let me cut across my driveway. Make sure you have hearing protection in and some eye protection. All right, real quick, I'm gonna show you how I used my edging shovel the first time I did this. Push it down in, and go back and forth like this. And go back and forth. Kinda widen that crack out a little bit. Then you'll take your wire, push it down in there, and you get your stick and just start pushing it down in there. And every couple of feet, when I get my wire down in there, I'll take my sledgehammer and just kind of go like this. And it pushes that crack together to keep that wire down in the ground. And over time, this will all just fill in. If you're going to use your edge and shovel, that's how you do that all the way around your yard. All right, I got some of my boundaries marked off put this board down because I'm going to end up probably moving this string line because this is where I'm going to um, follow my I'm going to follow my tire just a couple inches from this string line so I can keep my boundary nice and straight on the edges the back side of my house I'm probably just going to kind of guess just stay along that field so I'm just going to do the boundaries on the on the sides of my property and in the front let's see here's my string line I'm going to try to be cutting over here because that cutter, the wheel, it, I mean, that's just how it is, how wide the machine is. 
So then I've spray painted kind of my corner to go around and then go start going across here 11 foot back from the road. Let's go start cutting. All right, I plan on going through my house right about there. Uh, I think for the video, I'm just gonna temporarily go in my cat door that's back in here. Um, Cause every house is gonna be different. You're gonna have to figure out how to go into your house. You could make, you could probably even drill right through your siding, through the uh, OSB or plywood you got on the side of your house, but then you're gonna have to maybe patch up your siding a little, or you go through some block, or some people even try to go through a window if you can get it through a window. But I gave myself lots of wire. Since I'm gonna go in here, I got this wire way over here. This is what's nice about buying a thousand, thousand foot of wire, so I don't gotta worry about running short. If you run a machine like this, there's probably an on and off switch, so turn it on. And then down here, this bottom one, on, at least on this one, this is, this is turning my gas on and off. Then there's a gray one here. That's my choke, so I'll put that all the way over to the left. This is my throttle, don't worry about that. You run that off of your, off of the handle up here. So, now I should be able to just pull this handle, start her up. this trench here but kind of forgot I got it the wire right here has to be twisted remember I talked about that in the beginning of the video so my dog can walk over this wire so but I'm still gonna need a trench here anyway so I'm gonna keep digging and I'll just pull the wire out of there and I'll twist it here at the end All right, I started digging and I come straight up from my house and then I'm gonna to get to this point right here. And now I gotta go, I'm gonna go out to my road. But I, I put a screwdriver in here cause I wanna keep this wire here. You wanna make sure you have enough wire. This first little bit of wire here, I'm gonna end up pulling out and twisting at the end. So I got it around this screwdriver and now I'm gonna start going all the way out to my road. Following a couple inches off of my string line here. I'm gonna have my boy come kind of behind me and just start pushing that dirt in that hole and packing it in. All right, now I got enough wire to get across my driveway. But I'm gonna take a couple screwdrivers and try to get down, try to get down in the ground here so I keep this tight down against here. 
that'll give me enough there. So I just hit that screwdriver down on the ground and I, I twisted that wire around there one time just to keep that down in there. Now I'll go do the other side. It can't hurt to have a little slack here and there as you go. If you try to pull on this a little and get yourself a little slack because that way it'll be able to expand and contract. Good, I think. I just wanted to try to see if I cut my grass down a little sh shorter because it seems to want to keep clogging up here in the front. Maybe that'll help me out. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure, maybe that might have helped a little bit. So if you want to do that, it's really easy to do. So just mow your grass a little shorter. I think it helps a little. Let's keep going. I'm almost done. If you got the, a little bit of money, I definitely 100% recommend renting one of these if you can find one. If you live anywhere near Lewisburg or Sealands Grove, look down in the description. I'll have all the information where I rented this. Now, I think I'm just gonna pull this wire out a little further. If I can't cut it. And then take this, another screwdriver or stake just gonna put this right here like that I guess you can go around it if you want doesn't really matter I just want it to stay there so I pull the rest of my um, wire out I know I have enough and then I got to twist these two so it doesn't fly over it aren't you gonna flip this huh? aren't you gonna flip that yeah, I wait dad so are you still recording yeah all right that might be a little bit overkill but i bought a thousand foot of that so i definitely want to ha make sure i definitely want to make sure i have enough to go in my house after i twist this together all right one other thing if you decide to rent one of these this little uh, this, this spot right here where I put my wire, that work, would work really good for those little tiny 500 foot rolls, but I had to put this pipe on there to put that big roll on like that, and I had my roll over that. Now I have the wire cut, and I'm going to twist it together. Alright, I got this wire that goes that way, and then this wire is the one that came back. Alright, I'm going to put this down in the ground Are you here. This? Are you using this one, Ned? Uh-uh. Yeah. -uh. And my boy is going to stay here and hold, just kind of hold this right here. And I'm going to go to the other end and twist these together. All right. I still have these two wires around them screwdrivers down there, or around that one screwdriver down there so they stay even. And I cut them off so they're the same length. And then I'm going to take my drill and op ah! just open up the chuck. And put these wires in there. All right, is it on that screwdriver good? Yeah. Okay, you got it in your drill, on your chuck. You just start... Oh, oh it got stuck in the grass. Pull it up. Can you get the grass out of it? Yeah. 
there you have it. Nicely twisted wire. This part where I twisted my wire, I'm digging this trench back out. I had to pull that wire out of there to twist the wire, so now, now I'm gonna just have to make sure this is all dug back out to put the wire back in. All right, now I'm inside. I gotta go from the surge protector to the transmitter. Now we're gonna twist a short piece of wire about three feet. About three feet long. Yeah, so I just, I just cut, I don't know what I cut off, maybe six, seven foot of it. And then my boy is gonna hold it, pull it tight, go that way. It's gonna pull that tight, don't pull too tight. Squeeze it, squeeze it together so it's, yep, okay. And then I just got my drill back in place because we're going to need this wire here to go from the surge protector to the transmitter. And the wires from outside are going to go into these red spots here. And the wires, and the wires from here are going to go into these black spots to connect to the transmitter. Is that good? Mm -hmm. And then also this is what's going to be plugged into your outlet inside the house and there's a screw in here so you can take the screw out of, of your outlet cover and put this screw in to keep this from unplugging. Well, this is going to get plugged into my outlet but everything else I'm just going to lay right here so I show you so I can show you how to hook it up. All right, I got my transmitter all hooked up. Let me go over this real quick. The wires coming from outside will go into your surge protector where it says loop and then the other side is going to say transmitter so you take the other twisted pair of wires from there that come over and they go into your transmitter it doesn't ma not matter what which one goes where now if you look at this this says boundary wire it's at, now now my wire is actually coming from the surge protector you don't you don't have to use that surge protector but I recommend having a surge protector because it will help protect it if maybe it lightning hits it. Now you plug this in. There is a, over here on the side, there's an ABC. A is for 2,400 feet or greater. B is for up to 1,300 feet, which is what I have mine set to. And C is 1,300 to 2,400 kind of funny they're not really doesn't seem to me like they're in order so I have mine on B because I only have like a half an acre and as soon as you plug this in this dial this dial here is going to set the boundary width you can go from like two foot to I think up to like 10 foot so the higher I turn this up the farther away when you when your dog has the collar on all right here this is easier to explain it this way the more I turn that dial up, the wider this, see this grayed in area? Like your dog's gonna walk up here and it's gonna start warning them. So if you turn that up higher, it's gonna make this grayed in area wider. So if you go like five foot from the wire, that means you'll have five foot on this side and then you're gonna get to the wire, then you're gonna have five foot on the other side. So me, I'm gonna train my dog. I might turn that up a little strong at first and then once my dog is really, really good and stays, it knows where all her boundaries are at, I might turn it down so she'll have maybe like two and a half to three foot, which that'll make it around, you know, five to six foot wide. Um, another thing too, if you have this turned what down too low, it'll start making that beep. So don't freak out thinking you did something wrong. Just start turning that back up. Okay. until it stops. Now, if it doesn't stop when you get all the way up to 10, you may have a problem. All right, I also gotta put this collar on and go test this out. All right, a couple more things about this transmitter. I, I recommend reading through your manual, but another thing that can goof this up is if you have this too close to something that's large and metal. Like, for instance, like a, a washing machine, 
Don't put this right next to the washing machine. It says it needs to be at least three foot from any large metal objects. So, or like a large water heater, don't put it next to that. And then it needs to be between 10 degrees Fahrenheit and 104 degrees Fahrenheit, wherever you're putting it, or 23 Celsius to 40 Celsius. Now, I am gonna take this apart, put this battery in, and go test this out. Get the same one I got. I got this collar. There's a little rubber seal down in this one part of the lid, so it kind of keeps that on there kind of tight. I had to try to pull that apart and stick a little screwdriver in there. Probably won't be that hard next time. I wouldn't twist these too hard. I want you to strip them out. They're supposed to be waterproof though. Now your kit came with flags. You're gonna take your collar, and the one I have vibrates and beeps. So all I, I mean, you can do that or you can use your little test light. If you put your test light on there, it will light up. I don't think you can see it. This is bright out here. Yeah, I can see it, but I can hear it. You'll know the difference. You're gonna hold this about the height of where your dog's neck is at. You're gonna walk out So right where that starts beeping or vibrating, you're going to want to put a flag in there. Maybe put it in a little bit before that. And you got to keep going along here the whole way like that. But you're gonna do that all the way around your entire border so your dog knows where that's gonna help him him or her learn where your boundary wire is at. You're gonna have to read in the manual how to train your dog. I recommend really taking your time. You don't wanna rush your dog into that because if you scare the crap out of your dog, it's gonna take them forever to wanna go back out into your yard. So just take your time, read the manual. It tells you exactly how to do it. And there's also some videos here online teaching you how to do train your dog on your boundary fence. But let me go get my kids and my wife because they're probably gonna wanna watch me get shocked by this thing. All right, everything is working. I'm gonna push this wire down in my crack in my driveway and seal this up. I'm just gonna go along there like that, get that in there and put some of that seal in. All right, I ended up going along there with this little thin piece of wood. That worked a little better. <clears throat> now, Trying to fill that up so it's just a little bit above the top. All right, don't cut your tip too, too close to make that hole too small because this stuff will come out really hard if you've got the same stuff that I got. Another tip if you have a creeper, seems to really help. All right, I got all my flags up. Like I said, I put my flags in right where it started vibrating or beeping. And my driveway, I just put a piece of wood and drilled a couple little holes in it. Hopefully that's enough. That way I can drive around them real easy. You probably don't need this many flags, but like I said, I've done this like three times, so I have a lot of flags. My wire comes in my block right here. And I did put it in like some PVC to kind of protect it for when I'm maybe weed whacking, I don't hit the wire. And it comes in under this mess under my workbench. I had to drill a hole back in here. There's the wire, it goes through the bottom here. I drilled a hole there. And now I have it hooked to my wall here. with the surge protector and it's screwed in. So one more time, the wire's coming from outside, going, at least in mine, make sure, I think it says loop, 
and it says transmitter. So from there, it goes from here into the transmitter. So pretty much it's coming out of the transmitter, going into here, and going in there and going outside. All right, I got my collar on. Oh gosh, that's tight. Okay, hurry. Dad, don't trip. All right, let me get one little sip of my rolling rock. I can't have that on my YouTube channel. All right. All right, here we go. This is gonna hurt. I gotta get down like a dog, right? Oh. Ah! 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 Come on, Dad, do more. Do more. Go, come on. That? No, I ain't doing that again. No, there, <laughs> Good night, the dog's here. Oh gosh, did you get my face? Yeah. I tried to, you ran into me. Dad, look up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think that one <laughs> What's going on? Stop. I thought it was supposed to be five feet from the line. Well, I think I got it turned up. A little, bit. Like a little bit. I gotta turn it down. A little bit. Ah. I wonder what my face looked like on that. All right, hope that entertained you a little bit. Um, if this video helped you out, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button to help support my channel. Or even check out some of my t-shirts that say God bless America down the side. They're down below my video here. Thank you very much for watching this video. God bless and have a great day.